Good afternoon, my name is Nick D for VIS. Welcome to episode one of Mankind This Destiny, where we are gonna be playing as the United Nations. Uh and first of all, let me just say it's been a while since I played Stellaris. I definitely like this new loading screen. I think uh first contact, the new DLC just released like yesterday or a couple days ago. I don't have that DLC, I don't have a lot of DLCs, in fact. I only have uh Leviathans and it should be down here. I do have Utopia. I love Utopia. Uh, but yeah, I don't have a lot of DLCs, so I'm going to be a little limited in what I play. But we are going to be playing as the United Nations of Earth. The myriad human nations that constitute their interstellar government are disparate, yet united in purpose. These bipedal mammalians have uh, developed a society that encourages, even thrives on individual freedoms and cultural differences. As a result, humans tend to integrate well with alien populations. Despite this, they have a strong martial traditions produced by million, millennia of intermittent warfare on their homeland, and their sometimes aggressive and unpredictable nature should not be underestimated. We are a representative democracy, uh, where citizens vote on officials who are elected to represent them, adaptive, nomadic, and wasteful. We are a beacon of liberty, uh, idealistic foundation, xenophile, and fanatic egalitarian. So we are going to go huge, elliptical, no advanced AI starts. Let's get, let's bump it up to 30 AI empires. Uh, scaling difficulty. And let's turn that off. I don't really like scaling. And so I'll make a pause here and I'll see you guys on the map. Okay, welcome to the map. First thing you should know, I got a, a mod which turns all like the, all of the like map black. I really like just having a dark space. Uh, but United Nations of Earth were ruled by Dolores Muwanga. Uh, much has happened since modern humans first emerged in Africa some 200,000 years ago. Our kind spread rapidly across most of the globe, and soon the first civilizations took form. Scientific progress had been swift, though not without cost. Uh, wars claimed millions of lives even before the atom was far, uh, even before the atom was tamed, and the turmoil of the 21st century saw the mandate of the United Nations gradually expand in an effort to create stability. By the early 20th the 22nd century, the supernatural organization has become a de facto world government. Uh, though some still resent the power wielded by the UN, as evidenced during the Mauritanian police action of 88, uh, if you can deny the technological breakthroughs that have come out of the its sponsor research programs with its the recent completion of the first true starships, mankind is about to embark on a new era of space exploration. Now let's begin. Uh, first things first, let's look at the galaxy. I mean our solar system. This is the galaxy, so yeah, very, very huge. Uh, and we start in the solar system. And you can see even Alpha Centauri is here. Alpha ah, Alpha Centauri. Uh, but we have, first of all, we got Mercury, which is a molten world. Uh, then we got Earth right here. This is, I think, Venus. <laughs> I'm trying to brush up on my, uh, my solar system knowledge. We got Mars. Let's see, uh, then we got Saturn. Where's Jupiter? That's Neptune. <laughs> where, where the fuck is it? There we go, there we go, Jupiter. And we already have a station around Europa. Um, but let's look at Earth. You can see, first of all, let's see, uh, let me check the, like the, there's definitely a way to check features. Here we go. So we got sprawling slums, the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, Industrial Wasteland, Scandinavian Reclamation Sector, eliminate all but the most stubborn pockets of radiation. So, uh, Scandinavia got nuked. Uh, Saharan Irrigation Project, uh, Mesopotamian, Ur Mesopotamian Urban Corridor, uh, Boswash Metropolitan, Metropolitan Axis, uh, Pearl River uh, Agglomerate. Let me read these little description. The boss wash riots traumatized an entire generation, led to sweeping legal reforms. Never forget uh, Pearl River agglomerate, the first region on Earth to be officially des designated a megacity. Several of their develop developing urban regions was eventually adopt their own version of the Golden Delta's successful anti-pollution policies. Maritanian <laughs> security zone. Unexploded munitions are still occasionally found near the compound where Colonel Tetsu and the remnants of his brigade made their famous last stand. Uh, Great Albertan Crater. 
when uh, 711494 Satis approached Earth and triggered the Great Panic of 72. Everyone thought this was it. The big one had finally arrived. Fortunately, it wasn't big enough to cause an extinction event. Unfortunately, it wiped out much of Alberta. Uh, rest in peace, Alberta. Um, probably one of one of the regions of Canada. And first of all, let's also get a research. Let's do uh, nanomechanics, um, biodiversity studies, and quantum theory. I always like to get the research done first, and let's get our let's get our science ship. We're gonna explore Alpha Centauri. We're gonna build another uh, science ship. Wait, automatics are okay. Yeah, that's good. I remember when you had to research that. So, uh, but let's get our shipyard, new science ship. Uh, we have our first fleet. We have only 163 ships. Let's recruit an admiral, unyielding, uh, resilient. Let's do. Oh yeah, we don't have enough unity. I don't remember when unity was required for getting leaders, but that's probably just a new feature. Uh, let's get Mars research station. Where's the other Saturn? Here we go. Oh, we're lacking minerals. So, uh, Earth. Let's see what we we could probably clear. Where we do some decisions that require some consumer goods. Consumer goods are going to be very important because usually I hemorrhage it, but features. Yeah, we need minerals. We're making pretty, pretty good minerals already. So, let's unpause. Stellaris runs pretty well for me. So, I'm also, let me make a pause here. I gotta boost up the sound a little because I like hearing myself, but it's a little quiet. Okay, that probably sounds a lot better. It was getting pretty weird. I just like. There we go. That's what I was missing. So, construction ships building something here. We're gonna get. A, we're gonna try to get Alpha Centauri down. But now we got the UNC Marco Polo. And this, I didn't even check our trades. Eager. Okay, go that way. We're just gonna try to consolidate here. I don't know if we should play tall or not. Uh, but let's get rid of the Pacific Garbage Patch. Construction complete. And research station. Build mining stations. And the discovery of alien life. Let me be a little dramatic. The UNC Kelvin has made a startling find on Alpha Centauri I-3. The planet's teeming with alien life. For the first time in history, we've encountered life forms that did not originate on Earth. This amazing discovery is silent so that those that who believed we were alone in the universe. Although none of the alien creatures found on Alpha Centauri I-3 are sapient, it's only lo it's, it is likely only a matter of time before you encounter beings that are. We may not be alone out here. So let's see Alpha Centauri. It's obviously going to be a continental world, and I think we found life on it. So we're going to prep our income just to make a colony ship real quick. And simple forms of life, the United Nations Earth is the buzz with news of alien organisms discovered some time ago. These little evolutionary marvels kindle in the human people a renewed hope of first contact with intelligent beings. Intriguing. Uh, so. But first contact protocols. Let's see. Uh, um, uh, our recent encounter of alien life forms has reignited and uh, made suddenly more urgent the old debate on how we should approach contact contracting any potentially. Uh, contacting any potentially intelligent alien civilizations we may meet. Well, some advocate focusing on establishing friendly relations as quickly as possible by contacting them with a message of peace. Others advise caution, pointing that we cannot know whether alien minds bear an ill intent towards us. It, w it would be unwise to let them know too much about it before it's necessary. So, uh, cannot attack neutral entities. Other nations will find it harder to stop communications with us. Negative first contact events are less likely to happen to us. Uh, 15 more influence. I think let's be cautious. There, the galaxy is a dangerous, dangerous place. Let's also let's so let's get our uh, mining stations up. Let's build. Hmm, let's going to say more construction ships. We're a little short in alloy, so let's get some. Locker cleared. Yeah, that's the uh, garbage patch done with. Let's see. I want to get some alloys. Uh, production. I don't know what the. It's probably alloy foundries. There we go. So let's get our minerals up, and then and we'll make some alloys. Alloys are going to be very important. We're going to try to do anomaly as much as possible. Found. But anomaly, uh, press the structures, little litter, uh, small area. 
uh, on the surface to Dahlberg. Three, practically begging for some archaeological work. So let's research it. It's going to be, let me see, Dahlberg 3. A barren world. Let's see what the anomaly is. That's cool. They, they, I remember they overhauled the anomaly system, so it's, it has really been a while, though. Uh, let's build a Corvette. I, I know I said I was going to build a construction ship, but might as well get started. And traditions. Let's see. Diplomacy, adaptability. Ooh, uh... Let's see, Diplomacy, Discovery, Domination, Expansion. I always go Expansion, so let's go that. Let's see, this. so Psionics, Synthetics, Supremacy, Cybernetics. Oh, that's new. Metabolic Research. I think the uh, Genetics. Oh, that's, they, they had some cool stuff, but let's go Expansion. We, I think I'll, I like to play wide. Just like, spread human domination. And we might, like... You might say we're egalitarian. No, we're not. We're we're gonna be a little imperialist. Uh, Alpha Centauri routine peculiar orbit around its red dwarf star renders the planet tidally locked. And potentially worth there a f further investigation. Let's research that. Uh, Empire capital. Let's let's get ready to get some alloy foundries. We're gonna try to set up. Um, I like to have sort of core worlds where it's like forge worlds, consumer good worlds, bureaucrat worlds just have it delegated like that so I'm gonna just try to play wide as much as possible consolidate our worlds delegate it and uh, subjugate aliens because we are playing the United Nations and let's just say aliens they're not human we're first-class citizens they're most gonna be second-class citizens uh, that's just how the galaxy works humans on top uh, we know uh, now, without a doubt, that a thriving biosphere is not something unique to Earth, both the scientific community and the public at large are eager to learn more about the various forms of alien life found throughout the galaxy. If it's a catalog, the life forms we encounter are already underway, but our xenobiologists have urged us to focus on our planetary survey efforts on habitable life bearing worlds. A commendable initiative. Situation log updated. So, see our situation log. So, habitable world. So, we just got to survey eight habitable worlds, and that will give a major boost. And Shenado, what are you doing? Get over here. We're gonna build a star base soon, just so we can get our colonization up. And we're about to get some alloy foundries. We also have zero crime, but Proxima Centauri B. For as long as we humans have been able to look to the stars for new homes, Proxima Centauri B has been a naive dream, a place we could look to with optimism, new home. Sadly, as our telescopes got better, we realized that the planet would probably be tidally locked, frozen hellscape, a theory which we have confirmed today. There's hope, however, as well as all the building blocks in the for a habitable planet. It might just need a slight push. Uh, another exoplanet added to our growing list. Modifier added. So we, that's cool. That means, hold up, hold up. That means we could call, we could terraform this. It's a terraforming candidate, so once we get terraforming, which is going to be a while, we're going to be able to terraform this. And so, let's do Starbase influence costs, new pops. Ooh, yeah, let's do reach for the stars. And we'll, we should be surveying the system soon. But abandoned amusement park. The structures in Dahlberg Third are uh, three are not as old as we first believed. It seems to be a playground of or amusement park of some sort. Science officer Dina Di Alessandro notes that many of the contraptions are highly complex creations. That we learn much from that into the builder's alien eyes. This may have been just a, a cutting sensor, cutting edge sensor array, or even a gigantic art installation. Regardless, to us humans, it mostly looks like a place where you would take your young and let them amuse themselves. Intriguing. And then I always like to do anomalies like that because that just gave a boost to our research. Let's see technology. Only 21 months, respectively, but remnants. Human xenologists are practically falling over themselves to publish their takes on the recent filings of alien life. This fevered storm in the scientific communities has had some negative, yet temporary impacts on pursuits in other fields. Remarkable. I don't think that said remarkable, but I don't really know. Uh, but we're going to move here. And look at that. Look at that. that those are two suns. G-Star. Uh, often enjoy optimal conditions for the development life, and, uh, meaning that worlds inhabiting a case type star have a longer than average window to evolve life. That's pretty System cool. Survey. And Alpha Centauri has been fully uh, fully uh, surveyed, so let's build this. Let's get the colony ship. 
up and ready soon. But we're gonna we're lacking a little bit of consumer goods. Anomaly found. And another Dahlberg anom anomaly. The air appears to be deliberately craft structured on the projects on the planet's surface, pointing towards the past long forgotten. Let's research it. And uh I know I said I was gonna build an alloy foundry, but might as well. Let's build an alloy foundry. We're build we're gonna have the system under lock Construction anyway. Construction complete. And yeah, look at that. Our first little blue blob. Might as well build a mining station too. And this is the Angola class. So we're missing seven alloy. And we just got that real quick. And 16 mineral, uh, not mineral, consumer goods. But the first leak, we've recovered artifacts from an ancient alien civilization in Procyon 1. It, if we have learned from these artifacts is correct, the civilization was some sort of confederation that consisted of many different alien races. They called themselves the First League and appeared to have coexisted in relative peace some two million years ago. Though the Procyon system lies in the region of space that seems to have made up the core of their territory, a partial map found among the artifacts indicates that the First League may have covered a significant portion of our galaxy before its initial collapse, and these are the precursors. Situation log updated. So, let's see. Uh, precursors, so we have to find six of their artifacts. And uh, oh, another tradition. Complete. Let's see, starbase upkeep. Let's do courier networks. Uh, small a network of small courier vessels, a reliable alternative for transferring VIPs or delivering messages that can be trusted. FTL communications this will tie our far-flung colonies more closely together. Uh, and we'll try to get galactic ambitions next, just to get that upkeep down. And let's colonize. Let's get some. Mm, yeah, we're just lacking consumer goods. Let's see market. Uh, let's. We have a lot of uh, of energy credits, so let's buy some of that. Don't know who we're buying it from though. Uh, so let's colonize Alpha Centurii. Humans, Alpha Centurii Prime. I'll go with it. So we're building that. A leader has gained a trait. Mindful archaeological excavation speed minus five percent, but anomaly discovery with chance. Oh, that's all right. We need to just find more habitable worlds. And we're building the alloy foundry, and we can do an auto -cathon monument, a monument to the first pioneers to visit in space, or we could do civilian industries. But also, but hmm, I was gonna say. Maybe we could also do an administrative office just so we could get some bureaucratic, uh, like, uh, bureaucracy ready. But let's do, hmm, I don't know. Let's do civilian industries because we we're going we we're gonna to be needing consumer goods all game. But, uh, the fumes lie thick. The planet Dahlberg II is a toxic wasteland, but our scans unveil that it's not always been so. A now extinct civilization seems to destroy its home planets via heavy reliance on climate altering fuels and toxins. On a remote hill close to a major city, we found a lone active facility, a robot assembly plant desolated and surrounded by military vehicles, so deteriorated they break up on touch. The facility is alien and mysterious, but could provide us with ample study uh, material. A cautionary tale. And that, look at that, that's really good. That's six engineering research. So that's a black hole right there. Let's get our construction ship over here. And we're gonna move him here. I'll probably, let me build another. Hmm, I was gonna say. But let's let's do what I would love to do and just buy it. Because we're making already enough money. Let's co queue up a construction ship. Just more Corvettes. We're gonna try to get our military as strong as possible. But, uh, 294066, strategic resource discovered. UNS Kelvin has discovered a, a previously unknown strategic resource on 294066, dubbed volatile, volatile moats. Uh, these prenatural particles contain a tremendous amount of energy, which could be exploited in energy production as fuel or even as explosives. While we do not yet possess the means to extract these resources, we should con seriously consider establishing control over the system for future exploration. That is very, very good. Uh, which, which, uh, is it this? No, that's, that's trade goods. Trade value, yeah. We, so is the UNS Kelvin, let me find, ah, there we go. Where are the, there we go. Uh, resources. So, 
they're in this system, so that we'll try to get that unlocked too. That's why I'm building another construction ship, just so we can get all these different things unlock. But so far, I'm, I'm liking Stellaris. I forgot how just fine it is. It's probably the most replayable uh, game. But yeah, unusual fluctuations in space summons have been detected in the vicinity of VK1 H45. Further analysts is advised. Yeah, this, this system is system very, very complete. good. And we're getting our first colony ship out, and we'll get our another construction ship, get this under lock. And you can see, it sort of is, if we control this or this, it's like we have this under lock too. Same with the Ibrez system. We gotta think strategically because it works by lanes. If we control one lane, we're able to keep it under lock. It might also be, this could be isolated from the others, and we'll have this little pocket under our control. But you can see our colony ship is headed over, and we're gonna colonize Alpha Centurii. And, uh, the US, let's see, UNC Yukon. Let's build a starbase. Colonization and the first progress. human colony. Our colony ship has gently touched down at the mouth of a large river delta, one of the several continents that can be found on Alpha Centauri I Prime. This temperate forested region will serve as the ideal first landing site. The ship has been permanently converted into the administrative headquarters of the new settlement, and its reactor core is the process being removed, so it may serve as the colony's temporary power source. Hundreds of small tents and prefab shelters have sprung up around the former starship's uh, Massive holes, colonists begin to disembark in large numbers. The first human city on an alien world. A great day for the United Nations of Earth. So, Alpha Centauri, let's see what it's good at. Features, crystalline caverns, uh, ore vine. Yeah, this is going to be a forge world or a, or a mineral world because look at that. Crystal mines, hot springs, max mining districts, max mining districts, max mining districts. Agricultural districts, agricultural districts. Alpha Centauri is kind of stacked. Uh, but we're getting the UNC, U, UN, uh, S, Yukon, not UNC. And we're waiting for this to be surveyed. Complete. But nanomechanics has been completed. Let's now do uh, basic strike plan. Let's do basic strike craft. And new tradition. Let's do. Uh, we. J we Ah, oh, we just missed. We could have done colonization fever, new colonies. Let's do that. Let's see if I'm, I don't know if we'll get an extra pop. Yeah, I think we probably will because it's still in the process of colonizing. So we're going to get Procreon and we'll get some rare minerals under control. It's also, yeah, we built civilian industries. And look at that. Very, very good. It's got it up. And uh, we got our scientists leveling up. Let's now also clear all these wastelands just to get more building spots for our for our Earth. We're also, as once Alpha Centauri is set up, we're going to encourage migration to it. Because we're going to make that like the mineral and alloy capital of our empire. Uh, I wonder if there's any other... Like, what I'm going to try to get set up is an alloy slash mineral world and then an agricultural world just to feed our growing civilization because the more pops we get, the less we're going to be able to feed. But, yeah. And Temporal Prism will finish with this event because we're running short on time. Our analysis of the temporal fluctuations in the Dahlberg system has revealed something remarkable. Remarkable. A massive prism floating in space rather than light, the prism reflects ti refracts time. Depending on the angle of incidence, the crew of the UNC Marco Polo report experiencing time at different rates. Biometric scans indicate that some have aged rapidly, while others are days or even years younger than they should be. While our study of prism has certainly deepened our understanding of the nature and properties of time, its origin and purpose remain a mystery. Fascinating. So yeah, this system is going to be like a research system. Research complete. And research complete. Let's, uh, grant, grant a lump sum of unity. Let's get genome mapping, and then we'll get the unity tech. But anyway, I'm Nick D4VIS. We're running a little short on time. Uh, I feel very, very optimistic about this series, because Stellaris really is probably one of the best, uh, still, uh, one of the best Paradox games. Very underrated. Um, but anyway, I'm Nick D4VIS. I'll see you guys next time. Let me know if you guys really like the series as much as I am. And I'll see you guys next time.